So this is my passion. I want to pass on my belief, my philosophy to students in Hong Kong. I said, don't chase after money. Chase after a life. Okay. Now, I'm not going to talk too long. I, I'm not the star tonight. The star is over there. You know, Jessica Chen is the star. And she's going to come on and tell you, you know, about her life. UBC, no, it's not, not UBC, sorry. Hong Kong U graduate. Hong Kong U physics graduate. Merrill Lynch, J.P. Morgan. And after that, she said, eh, I'm quitting. I want to start my, I want to start my own little business. So today, after so many years, she's a serial entrepreneur. Okay, doing her own business. Shall we put our hands together for Jessica Chan? Thank you so much. Okay, Jessica, the floor is yours. Thank you. Right. Yeah, all these questions, right? When Phil asked me, I was thinking, yeah, why did I quit? And why did I go on the journey, right? So uh, I hope my story today might resonate something in you, might be some important decision that uh, you see your values and something that you can actually resonate with your fellow friends and perhaps, perhaps you can actually form some new entrepreneurship together today, right? And uh, thank you so much. And I had so many friends actually uh, coming from all sorts of fields together. And uh, I really like that we together can actually form a new world. So today I'm just going to talk about the turning risk to op opportunity, right? Um, so I myself coming from a very humble family. Um, I am not born rich, um, so I had the opportunity to go to the formal education in Hong Kong um, and then I uh, gradually going into the universities. Uh, that is a very interesting point later on, so we can pull together. So currently I'm running a few business. My main business is anti-aging, I'm doing online business and uh, I got two side business. A lightweight phone bar um, in the uh, very stylish place. Also, uh, a yacht that we can actually do private parties. So people say, "Yeah, why did you actually start with all these?" Because I had something in mind that I can be someone that weave the net together. And honestly, I don't actually have this feeling at the very beginning. And this is something along the way that I actually find this. I call this the Greek worker. So if every one of you can actually find out the talents of each other, can we actually match each other's talents to form a better world? So this is one key question that I'm going to ask you today. Um, so when I graduate from the universities, I think probably a lot of per a lot of people might get this. Oh gosh, what happened? What am I going to do? Do I get lost? Because finally, I am graduated from everything I, I was told from my parents. I go to the night school, pick a nice uh, discipline, and then graduated. Ooh, suddenly, what do I do though, right? So I graduated from physics. Um, a lot of people are not daring to choose that. <laughs> Honestly, when I graduate from my secondary school, because I didn't really got a very high mark, not the top notch uh, people, uh, but my teacher actually told me one very important value that uh, I really treasure until now. Follow your heart. Do what you like and you will do that well. So that's why when I write down my choices along my uh, jupas, if you still remember that, <laughs> actually I put along like medicine, like law, right? So like everybody puts on the bang one, but I'm not a top notch girl. So obviously I didn't know about all the strategy thing, right? And boom. I just follow everything, right, and write down every reason why I put it there and why I put it, okay, next, why I actually like that so much. I landed on 
on my 14th choice. This is physics in Hong Kong U. But at the end, I like it so much because it actually challenged you on how you think. So we had some uh, physics and also uh, math students here, some masters and engineers, right? I like the methodology of thinking rather than only the substance, right? So it taught me a lot. So uh, when I was in the secondary school, I picked up a sport called the Orienteer. So like this girls, right? They got lost in the forest, and so do I. I only had, um, well, a compass, a whistle, if I had any risk to call for, for alarm, right? Oh, I got lost, right? Then I can blow my whistle. I only had compass, I only had the whistle, and I probably only had a small bottle of water. So this is what we carry on to the mountain and it's kind of like a treasure hunt. So this sports actually taught me so much because every time we have to find the treasure, probably 10, 10 points, and then the fastest person will, will get to be the winner. And I had to do so much decision making. And uh, after the competition, I normally discuss with my fellow com uh, competitors and then say, hey, what did you see? Why did you take that route? Why do you do that choice, right? So if you are in the mountain, you want to go from A to B. So there might be a couple of choices that you can actually go up the mountain first, and then you go round it in a parallel road, and then you go down there, right? So that you will have an advantage of a better visibility. So if you have a good physique, you would normally pick that. But you say, oh no, if there is no obvious path up there, why can't I just follow some like, uh, well, longer path, but I run faster, right? So you can actually pick that choice also. However, you might lose your vision of where is your point. So you have to make daily choices every time. So uh, in three years time, I do trainings and competitions every week. Uh, so that took me to the junior squad. We're earning a trip to Japan. Whoa, that's very cool. When we actually go into the mountains, oh gosh, I got lost. Three whole hours, I got lost. Because in the Japan, right, the forest is not like Hong Kong. Tall trees, Right? You don't actually see anything through there. As if our life, sometimes, yeah, we know where we are going, but we don't actually see an obvious path. What do we do? So this is a very important um, experience for me to actually find back my way for another one hour. <laughs> and at the end, um, the uh, thunder. The thunderstorm is actually coming in, come closing in. I was so cold and I don't have any water at all. I had to pull off the leaves to get a drop of water <laughs> onto my mouth just to get me survive in that three hours. So in that time, what would you do in your life? You bump into like dead end. You bump into ways that you don't expect to be. You thought you were going this way, but I got a little error on my compass. I go a little bit longer than I, I thought I would be. So these experiences actually helped me so much later on when I was choosing my career. And um, that is something that I think uh, very important uh, to my life. So. That's why I said 14th choice, I landed on the physics. And that actually helped me to understand what I truly like is how you do the logic and how you discuss ideas with each other. Um, then you have to face different things. And uh, when you start your journey, a lot of times will you say, okay, I want to get this. And then you go along, right? But did you actually set an exit criteria before you start your journey? A lot of times, I told myself, 
if I start my job, if I stop learning, especially from the investment banking, I have to switch. So this is my exit criteria. So um, it's very interesting uh, when I graduate. Uh, Hong Kong is going through a downturn just like now. You know, uh, normal university students, how much they earn? Do you know now? Like how much uh, a graduate earn now? Now? Yeah, now. Yeah. A new, a new, grad, new grad. Green, green Hornet. Green Hornet, green, yeah. Green Hornet. 20,000? Oh, that is a very good sum, okay. 10,000? <laughs> yeah, roughly. So by my time, right, so the top students, they uh, probably earn around like 20,000. Uh, the normal students, they should earn around 10,000. But my year, if you go through the job choices, university students can only get 4,000 to 7,000. My year. Yeah, so that was right before the tech bubble burst. <laughs> that was 99, right? So I go through a lot of job postings and then shoot out my uh, CV, right? I didn't hear anything back, especially because I am in the physics major. People ask, can you do, right? You can probably teach, right? Um, I did study computer science in my, uh, well, as a, as a uh, well, combination. However, people would say, then I prefer people from the computer engineering purely or computer uh, science uh, directly. I don't want someone in between. So that's why I did a choice that I go to something to say, okay, well, I might go to some big corporate where uh, they will uh, put resources to uh, grow the youth, right? So that's why I pick, uh, well, that, that page, which is a temp job, co-op students, but I'm a graduate, okay? Finally, I got some interviews, and uh, almost all my job did not actually appear on the job posting. The first interview that I went, went into, they felt that I am not qualified. So I didn't have like certain Java skills that uh, they required. However, they said, hey, this girl actually seems like uh, communication quite good, right? So they referred me to another team, which required less, right? So that's why I got into Merrill Lynch. And I didn't even know that is an investment bank <laughs> by then. So I did the research. But because I'm a science student, I don't actually know so much about the commerce or the uh, world, that, that world, the business world, right? So I got in and uh, yeah, started. I thought I was doing the, um, the uh, computer job, right? So I asked my boss, hey, what is a typical day like? So they said, oh yeah, securities, you have to look after the production and we had a bunch of uh, systems and you have to be like time sensitive and answer the uh, user's request, right? And then I think, really? Did I actually apply for secure? You know, <laughs> like a building security? I thought secure, right? So I didn't know securities is secure, right? So <laughs> I thought I was... Right? So I, I actually didn't even know that, right? So when I first started, right, so oh then I know this is the, the real place, top three thing in Hong Kong, right? So in the investment banking, I got one year contract. So I well really paid all my effort, tried every day to learn um, things that I should be. However, one year passed very quickly and I am facing another challenge. You thought you were landing in a very good place, right? Finally, you talk to your friends and then you say, yeah, I got into marriage, right? But then I'm going to be job lost soon, right? So I asked my boss, right? Um, they, they said, yeah, don't you know? You're just like a contractor, right? Who came here for painting, right? So war painting, right? So you've done your job, you go out of the door, right? I asked my direct boss, However, he said, I don't actually need you here, right? And I was thinking, how can I secure my job? I asked my other manager who is managing the uh, well, overseas projects. And then he said, yeah, I do like you, 
because you are able to ask stupid questions. Really? <laughs> Is that a criteria that people actually would keep you for? And then, yeah, he actually gave me a job. He gave me a three times salary. A three times salary for someone who are able to ask stupid questions. So don't underestimate anyone that who are there to actually communicate because he said you don't sit on the problems. When you see a problem, you actually go out there and seek the solution. You ask the relevant people. And also I think this teach me a lot of important thing is who is the stakeholder? Don't take a no as no. Don't think that when you bump into one single dead end, that is the end of the story. No! You can actually find exception, right? So it's something that I actually find about it. So in the whole uh, banking industry, I was starting as a back office technology. Um, I started to understand what are the daily requests, um, what kind of projects I start doing coding and stuff, right? Soon. Five years gone, I was thinking, yeah, this is a very good place, but how can I actually learn more? I like to go into the front office, right? So as anybody wants to do, right? Because that is more closer to the sales and more closer to the front end business. So you actually understand everything. However, again, from the industry standard, they don't hire anyone from the back office to the prestigious front office. So a lot of the stigma that they will tell you, hey, you're not qualified, right? This is not the right place for you. One day on the printer, I find a job posting. <laughs> Actually, that was from the front office. So I chatted with the other boss. Hey, are you guys needing someone? They said, yeah, actually, preferably they know the back end stuff as well because we are building something brand new and we need someone able to communicate to the back office people. Whoa! And then I find a way, though it is a very rare exception, and because I do mingle um, in my daily life, I would go out with my uh, other colleagues during lunch and uh, after hours we might go for drinks, right? And that's why I do understand what the front office people are doing. So that's why you have to do your homework. Don't just ask for that. And when the time comes, there is the great chance. So um, yeah, I, I think this is a very good uh, opportunity for me. So when I actually land there, nine months, oh, sorry. The industry is evolving and they want to bring some really big change to the whole team. So, um, yeah, as if I am on the desert again. <laughs> so, my boss said, number one, I give you two choices, right? So, number one, you keep on doing what you have been doing. Um, so, we like you to talk to the back end people and doing reports, right? Analyzing things, right? But another boss told me, yeah, we're going to start a very new project. However, we don't actually know how big the scale is, right? Um, I don't even know uh, well, what kind of uh, projects that we might be doing. Then they asked me to choose because they need to split the team. So what do you think I chose? <laughs> yeah, because I want to change, right? If I didn't have that in mind, I would never move on, right? So now I pray for that and I got a second chance, right? As if the world is listening to you, but you need to manifest first. You have to make the decision first. So my second boss, right? So they, they gave me a very brand new opportunity. We landed on something even the exchange doesn't know. So we started on something called the electronic trading. So that means we use AI, big data, and then we automate everything. So even on the exchange, you had a buy order, you had a sell order. In the past, you bring a sales, and then they say, hey, I got a 100 uh, HSBC, right? So what's your price? I can do a matching for you, right? But how long that took? Might be a phone call, right? So 
that actually took menu power to match things, right? But now we're doing it with the computer, right? Auto matching system, right? Whoa, that can save a lot of manpower. In the past, the trader can actually put in three orders in one second. They are quick actually. Pat, 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 right? So on the keyboard, one second, three orders, okay? But in our time, you are all blinking now, right? One blink, 6,000 orders into the market. So what is quicker? Haha! <laughs> so in my, well, later on six years, we brought a lot of change to the securities industry where the AI, the big data, the computer is using the algorithm, right? So that's why um, this is like a well, journey that you don't actually have a path. We actually taught the exchange. How can we do a dark pool? Dark pool means you don't even know the buy price or the sell price and you just send in an order blindly thought that there is a fair mechanism that can match your order, right? So yeah, this is the things that we do, right? So at the same time, um, I went on my first backpack uh, with my friends. This is the first snow in life that I actually see, very naive. And uh, in those days, I really worked my, uh, well, heads off. So every day, uh, might be 7 a.m., uh, we're already in the office. Um, 11 o'clock, uh, we are still talking to the New York, right? We had uh, UK in the afternoon, New York in the night, right? And every day like that. Sometimes you have to work till like 2 o'clock, so this is our time. So I'm burning the candles to end it, right? So, Yes, and I will save her any chance that I can actually get out of the office and then go on to my backpack journey, right? So this is my first backpack journey and uh, this is the time that um, I actually run a team um, in Singapore and uh, probably uh, we're working with 70 uh, teammates, right? So we have to deliver things that over 10 markets and uh, we are like doing all these things in six years. So in six years time, um, I think my role in uh, Merrill Lynch, pretty much we have revamped everything then. And uh, well, some headhunter came up and then say, hey, do you actually want to move to JB Morgan, right? Because your head of your boss, boss, boss is already there, right? Uh, normally, I said no to a lot of the headhunters. And by then, I already worked probably around 11 years and a half. But I was thinking, right, if I actually, uh, well, had a chance to really see the world and not sticking in one place, I want to take it, right? So that's why, uh, well, uh, I tried uh, to jump out of my comfort zone. This is, uh, I was trying to be an MC for my friend <laughs> uh, at her wedding, right? So this is a time that uh, we replace a lot of human things, right? So when you are doing face-to-face -face meeting, 2007, we are already doing telepresence, which means you are talking to a wall, projected your colleagues on the wall, same size as you, right? We are already doing the uh, electronic trading, right? And because we wanted to reduce the cost, right? So that bring a lot of change in a lot of uh, fields. Not only the industry, not only the financial, financial industry, right? So that's why um, in the whole well, uh, world, a lot happened. You can actually see that uh, 2000, um, the tech bubble, where, well, first, right? 03, the SARS came. Uh, 09, the Lehman Brothers, right? The financial crisis. And, uh, well, 2011, when I submitted my resignation, three days afterwards, Japan had the tsunami. And I was originally, well, had a, a, a project, global project, that meant that I need to work in Japan for uh, a long time. So lucky that they, well, gave me that call and then say, hey, do you want to work in JP Morgan? And luckily I said yes. And after that, well, nobody can actually switch job because the whole industry is going down, right? So in JP Morgan, I repeated the six year cycle in a shorter way, right? So four years, we revamped everything for JP Morgan. But then I saw that things 
are starting to repeating. And where are the industry going? And a lot of the industries, because of the AI, because of the big data, right? So they can cut a lot of the human power, right? So the systems that we build, we will cut off like 90% of the uh, front, front office sales, right? So that's why I was thinking, yeah, this sounds like a very good job, right? However, can I stay there forever? A lot of the senior person, right, in the in the roles, right, every quarter we have to submit names to the management, and uh, I had to uh, well probably submit ten percent of my team, and you don't know when they will be set, and you have to work with them daily. You have to motivate them and then say, hey, finish this target, right? So this project, oh, you are really uh, well, such an important asset to the, com uh, to the company. However, the next week, suddenly the boss said, hey, time to pull the socket, okay? So they will be boom, right? <laughs> so I can't stand this, right? So I make promises to my team across like 70 people. But I cannot promote them. I cannot add uh, salary for them. So I, I can't face this, right? So I can't face this anymore, right? So I think there are better way that we can actually make use of our talents, right? And I thought that only 20% of my talent is actually being used in the financial industry. So I started to really, well, um, engage myself on personal growth and a lot of other stuff to think that, okay, one day, right, if there is opportunities, I can actually jump out, right? So that's why with all these, right, so that might be the last backpack that I, I actually went. And I knew that um, if I had to go on holiday, um, well, nobody will take up my work for three weeks. <laughs> and later on when I come back, I still need to do all this, all these things, right? This is Kota Kinabalu. And I knew that climbing to this 4,000 meter mountain, I might risk my life because I know that my health is actually having the alarm, but I didn't blow my whistle yet, right? So yeah, and uh, I really go back in and then see, ask myself, right? Who am I and what kind of talents I have and what are the qualities that I really want to contribute to the work, right? So these are the things that I've gone through and just like when I finish my orienteering, I would ask all the talented people, what is the vision that you are looking at your industry? Why are you making that choice, right? So I ask all these questions to myself, right? So think of it, what role that you would pick on this picture? Are you the person here? Are you the person here? or there? What kind of role in your industry that you are currently doing? If you're not on the frontier, you might not even see what is coming to you, right? So just like I was in the jungle, if I don't climb up the mountain, right? So that might be the well, toughest thing that I need to oh, climb up 100 meters to the top, right? To actually see what's coming, right? Um, if I didn't do that, I don't actually see what's coming. So that's why my experience seeing our technology job is actually, well, killing 90% of a lot of the important talents in the industry. I think there are much more, well, um, big change coming to the, to the whole uh, world. The world, right? Yeah, thank you for that. So, uh, yeah, I'd rather to be the person, well, scouting the world, right? Checking out and then trying to be there. And we can be the frontier to walk over, right? So that's why I started to really pick on myself and uh, I got some transformation, branding change, and I wanted to really see what can I be, right? So um, that is the thing that I was trying to do. If you check on that, I started my journey around 99 there. And here, like, uh, well, we gone through the Lehman Brothers and all that, right? Uh, by 2015, I was already out of the financial industry. And a few years later, finally, right, 
uh, well, that is, uh, well, some of my change right, so this is my uh, secondary school time. And then uh, that was the days that uh, my last day with Merrill Lynch, and this is my last day uh, when I was in JP Morgan. Um, so that's why I would really uh, well, urge every one of you, if you can actually do your own dream graph, right? So what do you actually want to contribute to the world? I wanted to, um, well, do a lot of the, uh, the uh, visualization and also the uh, history because that's why I've been doing the archiving project for Hong Kong U, uh, University uh, Authometry, right? And uh, I like wine food and wine metrics, so I like the tasting. We have cheese masters here. I've got a lot of F and B uh, friends over here, and I like to well use technology, right? So the ideal thing, right? Yeah, I like to run short projects that we can combine the technology, and then we can pull people together. So these are the things that we, I really like to do, right? So a few years later, you finally see might be that my choice is correct, right? Because this is uh, UBS, the uh, biggest trading floor on the whole world, right? And well, on the left-hand side, uh, right-hand side, uh, 2016 is emptied, right? So by before 2002, uh, it was the biggest, uh, like uh, 44 tennis court, the biggest trading floor in the world. So a lot of the human power thing is now auto match. So that means in 14 years time, right from 99, when the first day I entered, Exchange already started the AMS system. And 14 years later, everyone can be gone. They don't need to see each other, right? So just like now, you can do your Zoom meeting, you can do home office. So the world has changed so much, and now you actually see ChatGPT. So, well, also the Hong Kong Exchange, right? So it's like an end of an era, right? So I'd like you to really think about what can you do now, not only in your own world. If this is a very comfortable place, think of 10 years later. Check GBT, if you give them the right command, they can actually generate you the right posters, design, even the uh, spreadsheets or everything, right? So these are the things that are upcoming. I hope you can actually uh, pick on uh, different uh, well, industries, which is climbing. So uh, try uh, some of these things, right? So even the, uh, well, the silver aging uh, well, community, they are very big, they are very wealthy but they don't actually have choice or they don't actually have the uh, nice support for them, right? And awareness and also something that you can cross boundary. So something that like spiritual health, like, uh, well, our teachers here, right? So analytics, a lot of the new things that you can actually add. So people who are in the industry of engineering, right? So medicine, you might want to be a doctor that you can actually work with a robot. If you can't work with the AI in the medicine field, probably you might be, well, just like our traders, right? So the, they would ask you to uh, go home and uh, spend time with your grandchildren. So yeah, like uh, when I started very uh, beginning of my presentation, right? So the orienteering thing you thought is only for someone grown up, right? But now even kids, they can navigate in a park, right? So something, that you want to practice making the root choice every single day. And that is something that you can really practice your judgment. And that might help you in the, well, long time. Uh, so just to highlight, well, summarize what we have gone through here, right? So on the risk, day one, you might get lost, right? Um, you might have some general impression, uh, some stigma that you cannot break. Seems like these are the things that, well, the father's telling you, the grandpa telling you, you can't break that. Is that true? And the last one is, yeah, you might go on to a dead end or crisis on your own journey. A lot of the black swans is going to come up. But what are our solutions? You can turn them into your choices, right? For the getting lost, allow yourself to get lost because one of my story is that if you are wandering in your well the wilderness enough long enough you will
will handle your fear and you know that allow yourself to go out of the comfort zone, you are actually giving more flexible choices. And exception that we talk about, when there is a rigid box, there is some breaking way that you can actually try something new, right? So lastly, right? If you feel this is a dead end, congratulations, because this is a very good chance that you can bring something disruptive. That means you have to break through something first, right? And then to bring some new things there, right? So like my great friends, right? So they are always thinking of what are the new entrepreneurship concepts, right? To bring to the new world, right? So these are the concepts. And another thing that's very important, right? To make sure that you buy yourself out from a full-time job. Or at least you do like a part-time entrepreneurship you don't only get paid for your full-time work well, time. So you buy out yourself so that you end on your flexibility. So your financial status, right, can support you. You have sustainable income. So I hope, right, this is the toughest thing that you have to get the right balance, right? I tried to be like slip down this uh, well serving board a couple of times. I go blah, 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 roll over, try again, right? Then go over, right? Try again, right? So at the end, I really think one thing is my mentor. Along my way, someone who can actually see your talent, like Phil. He sees so many good talents in you. Try to say to your mix, well, your left-hand side people, hey, I see some good qualities in you. Try that on your on your left-hand side. Yeah? Try to talk to your next one, right? Hey, I see some good qualities in you. Yeah, talk to the next one. And then try to say, thank you, right? You can be my sponsor, right? In Chinese culture, we always say, no, 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 my level, right? Quarter. No, don't say this, right? Thank you, right? So you can be my sponsor. Even though the senior leaders, at a certain point, they will find some first MVP, they will find some CEO, you can ask Phil, right? A lot of the very like uh, senior people, they want to find the career sponsor. So that means they can point you through your way. So I hope today we are here to help each other and that will give you a much better journey. So if you'd like to stay in touch, this is my contact. Thank you so much. Jessica, I'll, I'll give you a hug, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just two more minutes, okay? Hang tight, you know, the food is there waiting. Um, I have a lot of uh, JP Morgan people sitting here, right? Or ex JP Morgan people sitting here, you're one of them. And today I want to introduce you a very good friend of mine, her name is Louisa Wong. Okay, now, Louisa, could you please stand up and be recognized? <laughs> All right, now, when you talk about headhunters, right, she's the most, most, I would say, huh? experienced, wealthy, what else? Can you describe Louisa? Resourceful. Plus, resourceful is a good word, okay? There is always one of the world's largest. Banking, finance, it's called global sage. Have you heard of global sage? Global sage, but then you're not in that category. I'm just sorry to say that. <laughs> I was told you know, if you don't make one million US a year, you know, you're not qualified to talk to us. Ooh. I'm just kidding, okay? But anyway, so Louisa just wrote, wrote a book. It's called Woman Who Chased Butterflies, and the book launched was two weeks ago. There's another one coming up. So today, I want to dedicate this. Actually, you know, you're the first one to tell me, hey, Phil, you won't last more than three months, you know, with STC. And today, you know what, Louisa, this is the last episode of year 12, meaning 120 months later. Ooh. We're still here kicking around. We're still here kicking around and talking to young people like this. So it's a lot of things tonight. You know, you're a good speaker, great speaker, you know, a lot of inspiration. 
and nurturing, you know, you guys, you know, you guys want to be smart? Ask dumb questions. Okay? Really? Okay. <laughs> it's so kind of uh, productive or counterintuitive, right? That's the word for that. All right, so I don't want to say anything more, you know, because I already said many, many things, you know, before the meeting, before you came on. Um, we're going to have a pro photo. Yep. Pro photo, absolutely everyone should be in there. And after that, you know, we have uh, something to eat, to drink. Sure. Is How that okay? Want to do it? We want to squeeze and do it this way or this uh, way? I got to ask, where is it? What is the best way to take pro photos? Yeah. So we might want to squeeze in a bit, right? So uh, don't leave the empty chairs. And then we're yeah, going we don't, to, uh, we, we don't want to see. We don't want to see empty seats, okay? <laughs> we don't want to see empty seats, we want to see people. So you see the seat next to you, empty, please feel the seat. Yes, yep. thank you. If you can pull off your mask for a moment, yep, so we can just come down here, yeah? Okay. Um, so, where's our cameraman? Yep, we need some uh, cameraman. Uh, Susan, Eugene, or Wendy, you want to take photos for us? How many books did you sell so far? How many books? Almost 1,000. Wow, almost 1,000 books flew off the shelf. Who's that? We might need to uh, tune down the two spot mic here. <clears throat> yep, so she can come back. Is the good enough? Uh, yeah, but we need to uh, tune down the few spot mic so if we're doing this one. This right, is too bright. Who's looking for the Is Poison helping? Yeah. Alright, Poison, thank you so much. Yep, that would be very good. Thank you so much. Okay. But then in the first row, we can't actually see them. <laughs> the first two rows. Yeah, thank you. Yep, a bit. There we go. Oh. Poison's coming back. Yep, sure. We want you to be in the photo, right? Definitely. Sorry. Oh, I, I just sit on the floor. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can stand here. We can stand here. No, it's okay. It's okay. You know, we're okay. We're good. We're good. And we can stand here. A bit back. So, yeah. Make sure you see us. Okay, good. Is that okay? Okay, one more. Yeah, you're using yours. Let's put some apart. <laughs> okay. This is your 12, right? Do you want to do a 12 here? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, one and two, right? Or just say one and two, right? One, two, three. Alright, good. Thank you so much. Thank person. you so much. Thank you. Alright, so we uh, what are we doing now? Eat? <laughs> yeah, why not? They're hungry. <laughs> Alright. Right. Please, over there. Your left, the two buffet table. Yeah, so QA, bring me some nice food, bring well, me some nice drinks. Uh, <laughs> eating, drinking, where does this no liquor tonight, right? We don't even drink, you know, drinking liquor, my student. So while we're talking, eating, and drinking water, talk to us, talk to Jessica, talk to me, okay? Talk to anybody you want to talk to. Hey, T, good to see you, man. <laughs>